Hello, my name is John Muneer, and this will be a three-part video series on a production of these eight-sided star-shaped patterns, which are cut on the bandsaw. In part one of the video series, we'll describe how these trapezoid-shaped pieces are sliced on the bandsaw using the AccuSlice and the AccuEdge system. And in part two of the video series, we'll describe how these pieces are glued together to produce these star-shaped patterns. And then finally in part three, maybe in part four of this video series, we'll describe how these patterns are used to produce finished products such as these coasters, some trivets, and even some small segmented bowls. I've had several inquiries about making some of these eight-sided patterns on the AccuEdge system. And when I was first asked about this, my first inkling was that it couldn't be done. The AccuEdge system is based on two fences. And what's very important with the AccuEdge is the angle between the two fences is very accurate. And we had this uh, custom machine that those angles are extremely accurate and you get wedges uh, for making segmented wood turning projects where the wedges are accurate to, to better than a tenth of a degree accuracy. Extremely accurate. But when I'm making a project such as this, I needed to use a single fence. And I watched several videos on YouTube uh, over the past weekend. And uh, I saw them making these projects on a table saw um, and were able to do it quite nicely. But when I was watching those videos, it was extremely dangerous. I, I saw them uh, making these wedges, cutting, cutting them on the uh, table saw. Their fingers were extremely close to the, to the uh, table saw blade. And in one case, they were using a pencil eraser to push the boards through the uh, blade on the uh, table saw. It just seemed to be very, very dangerous and I would never even consider trying that uh, uh, type of cutting on a table saw. But I thought, can this be done on the AccuWedge? In order to do it in the AccuWedge, you need to use a single fence. And again, my concern of the, using a single fence is the accuracy. I mean, I can set this, this fence to 45 degrees, and it's at 45 degrees relative to the, to the miter bar slot. But the blade may not be at that same angle. You can have skewing of the blade from the blade guides, twisting the blade, where the blade rides on your uh, tires, on your wheel, on your bandsaw, that can twist the blade slightly. And even a, a variation of a tenth of a degree will give you inaccurate cuts. So you need a way to be able to adjust this uh, fence to uh, compensate for that uh, deflection and the angle. And it, it can be done, and so I'll be showing that in this video how we can do that and make some of these uh, eight-sided patterns. Okay, to make these eight-sided wedges, I'm going to be using a single fence on the AccuWedge system. And so I have a piece of wood here which is about one and three eighth inch wide by about three quarter inch thick. I'll be using that to, to make these. And I did the design in SketchUp to calculate what the angles would be. And I determined the angle to make these needs to be 45 degrees, which is our number four setting on the AccuWedge table. And that gives me these, you know, parallelogram shaped uh, in, uh, pieces that I'll be cutting off the this board on the bandsaw. The way this works, I have my angle set to 45 degrees. I use my system to use one of these pins. This is a pin that uh, rides on the uh, fence on the AccuWay system and it drops right into the 45 degree position. So I'll be doing a test cut here to see how accurate these wedges are. Because if the angle isn't perfect, I'm going to get gaps in the middle here. And then I, I, if I get gaps, I can adjust this fence to compensate for those gaps. So once again, I'm using a 3 quarter inch wide blade, 14 teeth per inch. This is the same blade that we use for making wedges, for making uh, wedges for segment wood turning. And it's very important that the uh, board you're cutting be perfectly straight, parallel edges. I ran this through my board sander to get it perfectly straight and parallel. And it's also important that the board be clamped. You cannot hold this board with your hand while you're cutting it because you're cutting at an angle across the grain on the wood. And if you try holding this by, by hand, that blade is going to pull the blade because there's more resistance on one side of the blade than the other because you're cutting across the grain of the wood. So it's very important, you must clamp the wood to the uh, carriage on the AccuWedge system. The other change I made, I changed the uh, 
uh, tip of my AccuStop. Instead of having a flat tip, I made a pointed tip. And I'll show why I need that a little bit later. So my first cut is to cut a 45 degree cut on the uh, edge of this board. Turn my laser on so I can see what I'm doing. Like I said, I will be clamping this board, holding it tight against the fence, tight against the table, and clamping it down. And actually clamping in two positions here. I want to make sure it's extremely accurate. So let me go ahead and cut this first piece. So I'm aligning the board, so I'm cutting a toddy uh, on the board to give me a perfectly uh, straight point on the end. Clamping it tight against the fence and down against the uh, table. Okay, and now I'm ready to make my second cut. And so the alignment of this has to be set up. I cut this board off, and what's important now is the length of this bevel must be the same over here. So I have this piece of wood I cut off, and I can actually put that on there and mark the position. And so I want to cut an angle like that across there, so that this side is the exact same length as this side. And that's what I did here by using this board. Okay, so let me go and set that up here. And again, this is where the laser beam comes in handy for getting that alignment pretty accurately. That's where I use my stop. And this is why I wanted to point on a stop. I don't want a big flat surface, I just want a smaller point. So this point now is like an eighth of an inch in diameter. I'm just going to rest on the heel. And I always want to position it at the exact same spot. So I'll go and set that up. And so every time now when I go in and adjust the board, I just push it against the stop. Push it against the stop, against the fence, and lock it in place. And now when I'm done, I'll measure this piece, and I might do adjust this if it's off a little bit. And one thing I should have done, I forgot, I should put a mark on here so I know which edge I'm cutting. I you did that on my boards. So I know this is the edge that I want to measure. So let me see how accurate we are here. It appears to be a hair too long. So what I'll do now is I'll take that board, push it against my stop, move it back a hair, readjust my stop, And lock it in place. The other thing I did, I did off camera, I forgot to show, is I actually made sure my blade is perfectly perpendicular to the table. And I can check it on my wedges as I cut them off to make sure that angle is right on on all the sides. And it is. So now when I tested that piece, and this is the side that I want to measure how long that is now against my piece I cut off. And that looks pretty close now. So that should be good. So those pieces should be good. So now I just keep cutting them off. I'm going to cut a total of eight here.
So now I need, need to uh, sand the fuzzies off the edges because we kicked out the edge of the bandsaw. You know, there are some fuzzies that need to be sanded off. And also we're kicked out the end of the bandsaw. Maybe a little bit of a burst. So I'll sand these. I'll sand this surface and I'll sand these surfaces very lightly. So again, what I have here is my, here's two pieces I just cut and sand it lightly. And this first piece, this edge runs with the grain. And this is the edge I cut going across the grain. And it's important those two edges be the same length. If they're not the same length, I have to adjust that length with the uh, Aki stop on the system. But they look pretty good. So let me finish sanding the rest of these. And we'll see how they line up. You know, these may be hard to clamp, you know, trying to get all these two pieces with a rubber band and not slipping and sliding all over the place. So it works good is using some of these zip ties to set it initially. And once I get it close, I can put a rubber band on it. Okay, we got our eight pieces. We get them all aligned. So this eight point of star I made had a, had a gap. And a gap is about 8,000 of an inch total for all the eight uh, segments. Now this gap could have been adjusted for in a number of ways. Uh, I could have just sanded it. My bandsaw is actually pretty accurate. That, that actually is pretty accurate from the uh, bandsaw. In other words, this uh, carriage is pretty much in line with the bandsaw blade. And if I had just taken my blocks here, and as I was sanded, if I put more pressure on the tip, because if I sand it like this and put more pressure on the tip, I could have taken off a small amount, and I could have adjusted for this and probably made it come right into uh, alignment. So that's one way I could have done it. The other thing I could have done, I could have uh, adjusted the position of the bandsaw on the, the tires on the wheels. Moving that blade to the left or the right will angle the blade very slightly. Also, adjusting the uh, blade guides could have adjusted that to some extent. Uh, another thing I could have done is I could have loosened these mag jigs on the AccuSlice table and tried tilting the table a small amount and then retightening it. All those things would have made a minor adjustments, but it's, it's trial and error. It's probably not the best way to do it. The best way to do it is to be able to adjust this fence on the AccuWedge system. Now this AccuWedge system aligns with these pinholes in this plate. And they're precision machine in the shop, so the angle between these plates is very accurate. So this angle here is 45 degrees and a pin drops in that hole. Well, the way to align this is to take a screwdriver and this pin, raise this pin. So you can raise this pin just by turning it counterclockwise, a small amount, so it no longer hits into the pin. Let me put it back down because we're going to use that alignment as a starting point. So that's the line now. That's where I line when I made my cut. So let me tighten this up. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to measure the angle. I'm going to measure the angle from the outside of this fence to this front edge of the plate. And then use that as a reference point to adjust for a new angle. So I have a digital protractor here, which I can measure the angle. Okay, so I do that put it by putting this one leg against the, the carriage and the other leg against the edge of the AccuWedge table. So I go 135 degrees. So what I do next is I loosen this screw so it's above these index pin positions. And now I can move this very slightly to a slightly different angle. To, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it in and I'm going to get an angle of 134.9 degrees and then lock it in place. So now I have 134.9 degrees. So I moved it over a tenth of a degree. Very, very small amount. And now I'll make a new uh, set of blocks and we'll see how that comes out. Yeah, I just changed the angle from 135 degrees 134.9 degrees, so I lowered it a tenth of a degree. So now we'll make our cuts and see how they come out. All 
And there we have a perfect ring. And that was accomplished by changing the angle on a fence from 135 degrees to 134.9 degrees, a difference of 0.1 degree. Now that my bandsaw is all set up and aligned, I'm ready to start working on some actual projects. And I did drop a couple designs in SketchUp to lay out some of these patterns. This is a multi-layer pattern we're trying. But I want woods of different contrasts and different colors to set up for this project. So I cut a bunch of wood, different woods of different contrasts. And I got some yellow heart and some bubinga and some wingi and uh, paduk, purple heart, walnut, maple. And I, be, I cut these boards all to about 0 0.810 inches thick and wide. And then I ran these through my board sander, all of them, on both sides, both, you know, both, both this side and this side, to get them exactly square or the same thickness on both sides. And I can use these for the various projects, and I'll end up making, you know, projects like, like this. So let me show you first how I ran these through the board sander to get them uh, perfectly square. And then we'll start putting these on the uh, bandsaw and start cutting up some, uh, some small wedges to uh, start making these projects. Okay, I'm ready to run these through my drum sander and I have the height set to just a little over uh, 800 thousandths of an inch. I want to get these sanded down to exactly 800 thousandths of an inch. Each time I ran the boards through the board sander, I rotated each piece of wood 90 degrees and then repeated the process several times to get it down to dimensions required. So now all my boards are exactly 800 thousandths in this direction and also this direction. So by having the boards all the same size, I can mix and match these as I, as I glue them up to make my patterns. And now again, the first thing I do is cut off a scrap piece. Now I have to reset my uh, AccuStop because I'm going to a different width of wood. So this will be uh, my first cut to set my uh, length of this AccuStop. So again, tight against the fence. Now I want to get this measurement on this piece. One of the ways is put the two points against this carriage. And then I'll mark it. So I first use the laser to set the position for the cut, tighten the board in place, and then readjust the uh, AccuStop to the heel on the board and then readjust the board to make sure it's sitting against the AccuStop. Once again I check the dimensions on the two uh, sides to make sure it's the same length. And just a hair too long. Once again, I push it in, I stop, back it out a fraction, loosen my screw and turn it maybe a you know, quarter turn, lock it in place, and we'll give that a try. Okay, and we're all set here now. Let me show what I'm measuring. So this is a piece I just cut off, and I'm concerned about this length and you know, where my line is with the grain. And this is the angle cut. And if I match the two up, you can see that they're just about perfect. So I'm good now. So now I just keep cutting lots of pieces.
And once again, I sand the uh, pieces to remove the burrs from the edges using 220 grit sandpaper. And what I'm sanding off on is on the bottom with a blade cut, there's a little bit of a burr. And sometimes where it kicks out on this edge, there might be a little bit of a burr, but there's not. It looks pretty good. And I cut surfaces a little rough. It's not too bad. It's, you know, it's not a finished surface, but it's a good glue surface. So I'm just, that just needs a very light sanding. And you see that looks good. So now I just keep cutting pieces, keep cutting different contrast to wood. And then I can assemble these into some patterns. Okay, I've been cutting a couple hundred of these small wedges. And in doing so, I made a few changes to my system to improve its operation, make it go a little bit faster. I mentioned earlier that I put a point on the tip of my Accu uh, stop. The standard Accu stop has a flat surface. And that works fine if you're indexing on a, on a on a point on your piece of wood. But when you index on a, on a flat, it may bind on you. And that's why I put the point at surface. So less surface area, I just wanna, I don't wanna do this. I just wanna get a small area to make my contact to get my alignment. The next thing I did is I angled my uh, ramp. I just twisted it a little bit. And so, and I did that so when the pieces, you know, fall off, you know, they go off here. So I can get more pieces on here without having to move it between uh, on my cutting of the small pieces. So that's one other change I made. The other change I made, I added this, uh, this safety shield. There's nothing more than a piece of uh, plexiglass about two inches by what, eight inches. And I put a magnet on here and that just keeps any chance of my hand getting near that bandsaw blade. So just additional protection. The other thing I kept using this and this uh, clamp kept, you know, falling off. So I put a stop here so it won't move. Every time I move the board, you know, it, the clamp's not going to slide off. And that was done by nothing more than a, you know, um, a, a nut that slides in the channel, a quarter inch bolt and a little uh, spacer. This is actually the spacers I use for, you know, the clamps to make them taller. So that just, as I'm doing this, you know, and I, as I move, you know, clamps aren't going to be falling off. And I'm probably going to put a second one on for this one too, for the same reason. So again, it's a, so you have a nut, a screw and a, and a spacer. And I just can go in here like this and I can lock it down. And now when I put my clamp in here, you know, it's going to stay there and not move. So it just makes things a little bit faster and easier. Okay, I just made another change. I added this stop. I've used this in my, uh, my Accu wedge for controlling how far the table goes. So I'm using the same thing here to control how far back it goes. So what I'm doing now, I'll be always indexing the piece of wood at the exact same spot on my AccuStop. So after I make a cut, I bring it back, it's against the post, then I can adjust my, my board length, push it against the stop, against the, the uh, fence, lock it in place, and then cut, and just keep going through the process. So again, angle on the uh, AccuStop, the safety shield, the stops, for these clamps. And the other system will change was adding this stop. So I always bring this back to the same point so the board always hits in the same point on this accu stop. So all those uh, changes just make the system faster, easier, and more convenient. Just speeds up the operation. So let me show you how this works now. So I push my board in against the stop, lock my clamps. You know, watching this, you can see the improvement in efficiency by making these small changes to the system. You know, the board always indexes at the same exact spot because it, the uh, sled always comes back to the same spot. The small point on the AccuStop indexes uh, the board easily. The ramp pushes the boards away from the bandsaw blade. The safety shield keeps my fingers away from the blade. So overall, just improved efficiency and operation of the system. I'm getting ready to cut on the board here, but one thing you want to make sure you do is routinely clean your uh, roller bearings on the bottom of the sled. Uh, when you start feeling a little bit of resistance, when it starts hanging up, that's usually an indication your bearings are getting uh, filled with sawdust. And if you let that build up get too much on there, 
it can actually start to uh, crack your the polycarbonate sleeves on your bearings. So you want to clean those pretty regular. This concludes part one of this video series in which we describe the cutting of the trapezoid pieces on the bandsaw. In part two of this video, I'll describe the assembly and gluing up of these trapezoid shaped pieces to produce the eight-sided star patterns. And finally, in part three of this video series, I will demonstrate the use of these eight-sided pattern blocks to produce some finished projects, including some coasters, some hot pad trivets, and some segmented bowls. And once again, thank you for watching this video. If you have any additional questions or concerns, please give us a call or drop us an email. We'd be glad to talk with you. Thank you.